16, Romans 16, the book of Romans, or really the letter to the Romans. 16, we're going to do a little bit of reading. Amen. Romans 16, 1 to 20. I was thinking, uh, this happened a few years ago right now. I remember uh, receiving a phone call from Pastor David Kennedy uh, about, uh, some of you would know him, uh, Pastor Ronald Peterkin. I remember him ringing and, uh, you know, letting us know Pastor Ronald Peterkin had passed away. And to be honest, I thought he was joking. He rang us at 1130 at night. I thought it was a joke. If you know him, you know, you know, Pastor Kennedy likes to joke around, etc. I thought he was joking. And to be honest, he wasn't joking. I remember that night, me and my wife sat in our bed and we just, you know, just kind of stunned, shocked. Um, 42 years old. That's a young man. That's a young man. Passed away. And uh, again, straight away, we just flood with feelings and of sadness and loss and and then soon the emails began to come in and you know emails of people kind of sharing their memories of uh with pastor ron just basically saluting his life and the reality is church you don't know the impact somebody has made on your life especially when it, when when they're there is when they're gone we begin to realize it just how much they've impacted us how much they've imprinted on our lives and this guy was not a high flyer he was on a you could say big name in our fellowship, but it became very clear to many of us how much of a giant among men he really was. He did some great, great, great things for God. I remember as a new convert, I remember uh, uh, this was when we were meeting at the conference uh, uh, by the, uh, the, the the town hall. Some of you know Antelabar, we're going downstairs and pray. I remember afterwards, I'm coming out and he pulled me aside and just began to just encourage me. And just speak words of life and encouragement to my life. And I remember once he invited myself and his wife, my wife, over uh, to his house uh, uh, for for some lunch. Just, just again, you know, I know him, but I don't know him like that. But he was just, just very, just a very, just, just, just really a good man. And uh, Ron was, he, he was a consistent performer, and 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 he 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 was a man that that God's hand was upon him. And again, we don't really realize the impact somebody makes till they're gone. In the text we're about to read, Paul is going to list several people he wants us to take notice of. Because I believe like Ronald Pitkin, in his eyes, these people were heroes. And I want to preach to someone I simply call heroes tonight. And it's we want to look at tonight some heroes in the church of Jesus Christ. Let's go tonight, uh, Romans 16. Do a bit of reading. 1 to 20. I know Trish is happy. All right, let's go. I commend you to Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church uh, in, uh, in uh, a century, uh, that you may receive her in the Lord in a, in a manner worthy of the saints and a sister in whatever business uh, she has need of you for indeed she has been a helper of many and of myself also greet priscilla and aquila my fellow workers in christ who risk their own necks for my life to whom not only i give thanks but also all the churches of the gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house greet my beloved um, uh, Epaphrodotus, uh, uh, who is the first fruit uh, of our, our, our care of Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet uh, Antronicus uh, and Junia, my countrymen and fellow uh, prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet uh, Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet uh, 
Albanus, uh, our fellow work in Christ, uh, uh, statues, my beloved, greet Apelles, uh, approved in Christ, greet those uh, who are of the household of, of Antrobus, Antrobolus, uh, greet, greet uh, Her Herod Herodanian, uh, my countrymen, greet those who are in the household uh, of Narcissus, what is his name? <laughs> Narcissus, uh, who are in the Lord, greet uh, Typania and Typosa, and uh, uh, who have labored in the Lord, greet uh, the beloved Perses, uh, who labored much in the Lord, greet Rufus, uh, chosen the Lord, and his mother and mine, greet uh, Antichrist, uh, Pelagon, uh, Hermes, uh, Patropas, uh, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them, greet uh, Thylogus, uh, and Julia, Ner uh, Nerus, uh, and his sister, Olympus, uh, and all the saints uh, who are with them, greet one another with a holy kiss. The church of Christ uh, uh, greet you. Now, I urge you, brethren, not those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For those who are, are such do not, do not serve our Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, but their own belly, by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Verse 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. And I love this uh, shortly. The grace uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, be with you all. Uh, Tottenham. Uh, amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, tonight. God, all you're going to do, uh, all you're going to speak tonight. God, I pray your church will be blessed tonight. Uh, and I pray you be glorified in this place. I lift up anyone who's lost, uh, backslidden, oh God, you would reach into their hearts uh, and rescue them in this place. We give you all the glory in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and all God's people said, uh, amen. And amen. I want to consider tonight, I mean, whatever happened uh, to the hero, whatever happened to the hero. One of the images that is very much embedded in my mind is September the 11th, uh, 2001. Many of you would have seen uh, when the planes flew into the Twin Towers uh, and brought it down. I remember seeing the images uh, of the cameras they still had in the building. They were able to get some images of, of firefighters running up the building uh, and people running down, obviously, for their lives, panicking. Uh, and these men, at, with, with their lives literally uh, uh, in, 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 in the balance, they were, they were doing something I believe that was powerful uh, and heroic. Uh, and I remember also uh, 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 reading an article uh, about the planes, one of the planes that flew uh, uh, into, uh, uh, again, the towers. Uh, some men, uh, they, they, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, so, uh, there was a third plane, so, sorry, should I say, that was about to fly, that was good to, uh, headed towards the towers. And some men were able to rush uh, uh, the cockpit and and take over the hijackers, but the, knowing that they're going to die, none of them are pilots. They couldn't do it. Uh, but uh, one of the last things that were recorded uh, uh, in the black box was "Let's roll." In other words, let's do this. Let's 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 rush this uh, hijackers and let's take control uh, of the plane. Now I don't know about you, but we love stories like this. Stories of heroes. I mean, we love to hear about them. Um, but tonight, seeing them uh, is becoming a very rare occurrence. We love heroes. In fact, one of the biggest phenomena today is the superheroes. We talk about Batman and Superman and, and Spider-Man. We, we love these men. We, 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 you know, ladies, they fantasize about being rescued by some guy. And finally, I mean, when you rescue, you say those words, Amen. There's, there's, there's that, there's, there's that uh, a joy of that. Many hit songs uh, have been written about the hero. Bonnie Tyler, I remember back in the day, she sang the song, uh, I Need a Hero. Myra Carey sang the song, uh, A Hero. You know, when a hero comes along, uh, you know, we give the strength to carry on. Uh, I remember also uh, 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 Enrique Iglesias wrote the song, also a uh, hero. And even with all these songs and stories, you can say tonight that we have a hero crisis because researchers would tell us that less and less people have heroes. And those who do, 70% of these heroes mentioned are either dead singers or actors or entertainers tonight. See, when you look at our culture, it has an entertainment crazed culture based theme. Many, uh, um, 
have enshrined themselves in entertainers and celebrities as their heroes. But the problem we have tonight, amen, is many of these celebrities are not famous for anything other than being famous. They are simply known for being known. They are, they are, they are not known for their character. They are not known for their sacrifice. They're not known for being men or women of integrity. They're not known for being committed to others. Many of them can't even hold a marriage for one year. It is, it is, it is, these are people uh, that the, the, the world lifts up. And in fact, uh, you can say tonight, amen, we live in a time where heroes are no longer heroic. It was Sidney Harris who said these words, heroes and heroines created by our society are people uh, who have made it big, but not necessary people who have done big things. Now, why is this a crisis? Because heroes reveal who captures our imaginations. Whoever your hero is, whoever my hero is, it is showing something, it's revealing something about our imagination. It's about who we think about. It's about who we desire to be like. It's about who we see as the ideal or somebody to model our lives after. Church, there was a time when our heroes were people like doctors, teachers, God help us, our parents, that those were our heroes. Those were the ones we wanted to model our lives after and follow. And I believe that the enemies behind this, this, this lack or this bad uh, 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 product of so-called heroes tonight, uh, and his, his, his plan, his working is to remove uh, heroes altogether or replace them. So let's consider tonight the ingredients of a miracle. So what is or who is a hero? Let me give you a definition tonight. A hero is a person who, in the opinion of others, has heroic qualities or has performed a heroic act and is regarded as a model or ideal. Heroes are people who make a distinctly positive impression on your life through words or actions. They, they can be uh, nearly anyone, a parent, a relative, a neighbor, a teacher, friends, or a coach. Heroes also can be people who have you, people who you have never met, such as a political leader or historical figure. Tonight, church, we have, I believe our text is one of the greatest uh, uh, verses in all the word of God. Paul has come to the very book end of the book of Romans. And there's some great truths and revelations you're going to find in the book of Romans. In the book of Romans is where we find all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In the book of Romans, we find that the just shall live by faith. In the book of Romans, we find that all things work together for good for those who are who love God and are called according to his purpose. In the book of Romans, when Paul says those words, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And I can go on and on. Some from phenomenal jewels are found in the book of Romans. But I believe tonight the Holy Spirit has saved the absolute best for last. See, church, one of the biggest lies the enemy sells to the people of God in the house of God is that you don't matter. See, we go through things, personal losses, personal struggles in our lives, and he comes and he tells us to leave the church. He tells some people to commit suicide. He tells some people, listen, stay at home. It doesn't matter if you're here. It doesn't matter if you miss a service. It doesn't matter even if you're present uh, because you see uh, you, you, those people in church uh, and life in general, when it comes to them and life, you see, let, you don't matter. The Bible is very, very clear tonight that you matter. First Corinthians chapter 12, 20 to 21. But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. I know tonight that the devil tells you this, uh, that you know what, you're not important, that you know, if, 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 you were, if you were to die, for example, nobody would miss you, uh, that you are irrelevant. Uh, but in our text, the apostle Paul, uh, he takes time to show uh, the otherwise. Now, what is interesting about this text is not who is mentioned. 
What is interesting about our text is who is not mentioned. So the devil tonight, he says to people, the people who really matter, the people on stage, is the singers, is the musicians. The people who really matter are the ushers who let, get, get people to seats. The people who really matter are the Sunday school teachers. He says those people really matter, but when it comes to you, well, in our text, Peter's not mentioned. Paul is not mentioned. James is not mentioned. John is not mentioned tonight. You can see none of the biblical high flyers are mentioned. But the focus is on the church's everyday unsung heroes. Here is Paul tonight. Paul goes on to say in verse 1 of, uh, of Corinthians tw uh, uh, 12, uh, sorry, he goes to the same, uh, uh, he, sorry, he says in verse 1 of our text, uh, but also in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 23, 20, 22 to 23, he says these words, no, much rather those members in the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. Listen to me tonight, church. You matter. Every single person in this building, you matter a great deal to God and the purposes and the plan and the mind and the heart of Almighty God tonight. So I want to consider tonight some ingredients to a miracle because that's what you are. So who are the heroes in the church? So before we look at some of the heroes in the church, let me say this tonight. Heroes can come into your life at any time. A hero may be a person from your heritage, such as your mother, your father, your uncle, your auntie, or friend. A hero could be a person you associate with at a high point in life. It could be like a, a teacher or a or, 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 or political figure or a coach or somebody like that. Or tonight, it could be a person who helped you with a hard time. Again, a relative or an author. Listen, some books I've read to save my soul, man. Encourage me, strengthen me brought clarity to my mind. And I've never met these authors in my life. I hope to meet them in heaven. But they have been such a blessing to me. Now some question, and we ponder tonight as we think about the category of who a hero is. And I want to throw some things out to you tonight. There are some questions that I need to ask ourselves. Who has influenced me for good? And how do they specifically do so? Who? Number two, after whom would I like to model my life after and why? Who, who, who can I look, who do I look at and say, you know what, I, I, I want to model my life after them, why? Number two, who, three, sorry, who inspires you and why? Who is the person or the people when you think about them that inspire you to do better and to be better tonight? Number four, who has shaped my character or direction in life? How did they do it and why? As we think about this, in our text, we find some people tonight, people we would and we should find in a local church. And these are the heroes tonight. Number one, and I'm not going to go through the verses. You could, you know, I could because time, but you really just, I'll give it to you. Number one, we find a good woman. Read it in verse one and verse two of our text. It's there. I believe tonight, church, that the best women are found in the house of God. Thank you, wifey. So the rest of you don't think so. I believe the absolute best women are found in the church, whether they be single, whether they be widowed, whether they be married, they are the best, absolute best. You all deserve trophies and belts. This is champion of the world, <laughs> all of you tonight. Here is this woman called Phoebe. Phoebe is absolutely no different. 
Now, we know very little about Phoebe. We, if we take her name, uh, uh, the Greek word used to describe Phoebe, it suggests that this was a wealthy businesswoman. She had some money. She had some collateral. And, man, she was well-to-do, uh, you could say, businesswoman. Um, and uh, she's, she's, she's in this church in Rome. And, and, and um, uh, in, 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 back in the day, you know, uh, when an evangelist would travel to another church, he would bring something, you see it in the Bible, he brings something called a letter of recommendation. Here he is, he's going to this church, they have no idea who he is, they have no idea of his ministry, but they know something about where he's coming from. They don't know who he is, but they know where he's coming from. So he gets a letter of recommendation from where he's coming from, and he brings these people who don't know him, and what happens is the pastor or the leadership of that church is now giving him this, he's come to this church, and he passed on to them as they open it, they begin to read, I can recommend brother so-and-so. He has a good marriage, powerful ministry. He's respected among all. We do that in our fellowship, believe it or not. That we have letters or recommendations. They are sent to pastors that we can read and we can say, okay, this comes from a credible church or a credible pastor. This comes from a leader and this man has now come and he wants to be able to minister. Oh, well, let me see what he has to say about him and we read it. And now this is when we can release so we can say, okay, you can come uh, 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 and minister in our church. And what I want you to see tonight is this. Here is Phoebe tonight. She's going to Rome. And Paul commends her to the church that is there. He tells that church, you need to assist Phoebe. He tells that church, you need to look after Phoebe. He tells that church, you need to bless Phoebe. Do you know why? Three things. Number one, amen. He says, this is our sister. She's family. We, we, we commend her. We, we vouch for her. She's a good woman. Number two, she's a servant tonight. At the church of, amen, of Sintra, it means that she had a testimony. It, it means that she was recognized. It means, amen, that there was a, she had weight behind her character. But also number three tonight, amen, she's a helper of many. Let me say this tonight. And I'm not going to call all your names. I'm going to say all of you tonight. They are very, very good women in this church. Good women in this church. Tremendous women in this church. And you need to know that you are our sister. And you need to know that your testimony, testimony does not go unnoticed tonight, amen. And your life and you simply being you has impacted many people tonight. A local church has a good woman. Number two, married couples. Read it in verse 3 to verse 5. It's there. So I'm giving you, you can, you can put it on the verse 3 to verse 5. A good church has married couples. Church, there is something about a good married couple that makes a good advert for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says two are better than what? One. Because together they can assist each other and they can accomplish so much more. Now, let me say this tonight about, about married couples tonight, amen. This couple in our text in, 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 um, uh, in verse, um, verse three to five is, is Aquila and Priscilla. Let me say this about them, very important. Aquila and Priscilla were not a preaching couple. Aquila and Priscilla were simply just a good couple in the church. They were good people. In Acts chapter 18, it tells you that they were tent makers. They were simply a good couple. Let me tell you some few things about them. First of all, they were loyal. In other words, they flawed with their pastor. They didn't give him a hard time. And even the text says they stuck their neck on the line for him. This was a good couple tonight. Number two tonight, they were learned. In other words, they had some, some spiritual brains. They pulled Apollos aside and they were able to explain to him about some important things in the scripture. This was a sharp couple. This was a, this was this, this couple of men. They were, they were able to help him and, and edify him to be the man of God he ended up being tonight. Let me say this tonight. What may be preached tonight was being pulled aside by couples as a young disciple and they were able to explain some things to me. They're able to bring some clarity to my mind. They're able to show me some things tonight. And what is lacking today, amen, is what we need more than anything is we need some good married couples tonight. Good married couples tonight, tonight, amen, who have a good family tonight. Listen to me, married couples. Listen to me very carefully tonight, amen. Many people come from broken homes. And God has put them in this church because you are here. 
They haven't seen a good marriage. They haven't seen good parents. They haven't seen a good model. You are here tonight. God trusts you with them. God saying, I, I know just the church that will help raise them up. I'm going to bring them to Tottenham because you are here tonight. Number three, all the saints. It's a verse seven. It is the very end of verse seven that stands out to me. Paul says, who were in Christ before me? Pastor Tom Payne shares a powerful story of when he was a new convert. He went to a guy in the church and he borrowed some money and he never paid him back. Now, what would we say to that church? They're a bunch of thieves. Like Charlie would say back in the day, a whole bunch of hypocrites. He's a new convert. He's borrowed his hey, guy here. But can you run? The guy's giving the money and he never paid the guy back. Now, here's the thing the guy said absolutely nothing. 20 years have passed. It is now the church's 40th anniversary. And Pastor Payne pays the guy back with 20 years interest. <laughs> Here's the thing. The guy had completely forgotten. But Pastor Payne didn't forget. And he gives him back not just what he gave him, but a 20 years interest. Many of you know Pastor Glenn Bolton. Pastor Glenn Bolton was followed up by Pastor Ron Pitikin. Followed up on him. Number four, church mothers. Look at verse 13. It's there. I'm not going to read it for you. It's there. Read it there. When we got saved, there was a woman. Her name is Auntie Rita. We used to call her Auntie Rita. Auntie Rita, if you go to Wembley today, there was a couple there, Daryl and Sandra. Daryl is one of the day ones of Wembley. Auntie Rita was his mother. And the thing about Auntie Rita, Auntie Rita didn't say much. Auntie Rita, have you on a house, cook your storm, feed you, and send you home rubbing your belly. That's Auntie Rita. She didn't say much. Come here, cook, cook, sit down, eat. Just leave you alone. And we all eat in fellowship and laughing, mocking each other. Rah, 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 rah. Thank you, Auntie. And we'll just go about our business. Now, Auntie Rita's gone to be with Jesus. But I want you to think about the impact this woman made in our lives. Pastor Harold Warner. There was a woman in the early Prescott Church. Her name was Sister Burgess. She was an older saint. And she took him in. And she made, allowed him to lodge in her house. And she fed him. And she clothed him. And she housed him. And today, we have a great leader. There are many people that have no mother or they have a bad example of a mother. And Paul, in verse 13, he says, Rufus' mother is my mother. Church mothers. Number five, single guys. You can't forget the single bros. It's a verse 14. Read it yourself. It's there. I'm not going to read it for you. I believe... This is a list of the guys in the guy's house. What do I mean? Chicken bone underneath the bed. Underwear lying everywhere. Have no form of, you know, etiquette or manners or cleansiness. Everywhere. We carry on verse 15. You see the rest of the crew. Listen. If you carry on reading, you will see influential people, single ladies, all from different lives, all from different stages, all from different places. And what the Holy Spirit wants us to see is these people mixed together produce Paul. These people mixed together produce the powerful church. These people mixed together made world evangelism impact. And I'll say this tonight, church. Other people have played their part to produce us. Now God is dependent on us to produce others he's waiting on us he's looking at us he goes okay what are you going to do now it's your turn and i say tonight amen as i look at the single guys let me say this tonight amen i was talking to a brother about it let me talk about single, about young people young people beget young people that's when you get one you work with one all of a sudden they're a magnet to the rest they beget young people tonight 
I've realized that most things left by themselves are powerless. But once you mix it with others, it produces. In other words, if you take egg by itself, it's not nothing. But you get some flour, you get some sugar, get some butter. You can get a nice cake. One brick by itself is a brick. But you begin to add more bricks, you get a building. Think about that tonight. A soldier by himself is a soldier. Get a few hundred, you have an army. You see, by ourselves, we, there's not much impact we can make. But when we come together, we can make tremendous impact. I want to closely look at the truth about heroes tonight. Paul is concluding this. And in verse 17, he loves these people. It's very, very clear. One of the characteristics about love is love wants. A parent who sees a child going the wrong way and doesn't do anything is a bad parent. You've got to warn them. That's the least you could do. The least you can do is warn them. Yes, you can stop them, but you better warn them. Paul warns. Tonight, church, nothing destroys a church quicker than division. That word division means two visions. And it is literally something or someone pulling this way or that way. Can I say something tonight, church? The devil is not happy what's happening here. He hates this church with a passion tonight. He hates the fact that lives are being changed, destinies are being walked in, families are being built, the community has been impacted, and he uses people to bring division. He uses people to pull away, to influence negatively. And Paul says, you have to mark them and avoid them. See, tonight, church, nothing destroys the church quicker than division. I'll tell you something about division tonight. Division stops the, product, the products of heroes. In verse 19, he encourages them. And he basically says, you know what, guys, you're doing good. And always, church, when we are doing good and things are going good, the enemy wants to come and disrupt what God is doing. And I'll tell you right now, this church is making impact. I'll tell you right now, everybody knows of your faith. Everybody. Listen, in the British Fellowship, they know the Tottenham Church. In America, they know, in Africa, they know, especially Africa. Don't know. Don't know. They think you guys, I mean, you know the scriptures from the, you can recite the Bible, and you, you know, just in, in the beginning. Well, blah, 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 blah. I tell you, that's what they think. They think you walk around a big hello over your head and they can see it. That's exactly what they think of this church. I tell you right now, church, we can become experts in lies, slander, doubt, suspicions. And the sad things become numb in the word of God. And this is what Paul is saying tonight. He says, don't be this way. You need to be wise. And that word literally means spiritually enlightened. It means divinely instructed. It means learned. I believe the greatest security we have against lies is to be wise. Be wise. To have wisdom tonight is to hold on to the truth of the word of God. I want to close quickly look at this thing right now very quickly. These were Paul's heroes. And they're important truths to know if we are going to be heroes. Number one tonight, heroes are often unnoticed. How many people know we want to be noticed? I want to be, I want to be recognized. I want to be noticed. And if you don't, if you don't want to be a liar teller today, we want to be noticed. We want to be recognized. We want to be seen. But true heroism takes the background. The Bible tonight is an account of real heroes. But even in them, we miss the real heroes. There's, a, there's an author, a Christian author. Her name is Francine Rivers. She's written some phenomenal books. And what I, this woman's mind is, is sharp. She takes biblical figures and she brings a twist to it. Like, I never saw that before. And she does, she does this, she's done this four characters. One of them, uh, she, called the, uh, the, she called it the priest. And it has to do with Aaron. Because many times we look at Moses as the hero, and he really is. But Aaron, listen, Aaron played a big part in, in the whole Exodus, uh, in the whole speaking for Moses. Uh, and Aaron, I mean, is really a hidden hero. Listen, without Aaron, you could say there would be no Moses. 
Because many times Aaron spoke for Moses. Aaron stood for Moses. Aaron man, protected Moses tonight. He does, he does, she does another one called the prince. This is about Jonathan. Amen. And we all know David. We love David, the man of the heart of God. But let me tell you, without Jonathan, there'll be no David. Jonathan saved David's bacon so many times. See, the whole aim of this was to bring these unnoticed heroes to the forefront. This is the aim of Romans 16. I'm, I'm pronouncing names and I feel like speaking in tongues. It's like, I have no idea who these people are. We could talk about David and John and, and Jesus and all, and Moses. We, we know that. But some of these people are like, who the heck are they? See, without these people, we would not have Paul. Without these unknown people, we would not have Moses. Without these unknown people or people in the background, we would not have David tonight. Heroes are often unnoticed. Second of all, heroes are vital. Church heroes save the day. At least in my book, they still do. Then at the, the, the end of it, they say, they say whether it's fictional or whether it's reality, that is what heroes do. They are many times, you could say, miniature saviors. And if there's one thing a man needs, if there's one thing a woman needs, if there's one thing our world needs tonight, it needs a savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's the true hero tonight of it all. Lastly tonight, heroes are needed. Many Christians suffer from Christian paralysis. And what I mean, when it's time to act, they do nothing. This happens many times when we are trying to compare ourselves with other people. A hero tonight is no braver than an ordinary man. He's just braver five minutes more longer. That's all. He's afraid, just like you're afraid. She's panicking, just like you're panicking, my sister. But she steps out. He steps out five minutes longer. Church, we don't have to wait for that one future-defining moment when you and I are noticed and we gain that hero status tonight. What you and I can do is be a hero right here, right now, at the moment God has given us. Heroes is the missing puzzles. A hero is the is the is 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 is, is the chain that makes up the link tonight. And I want to ask a question before we pray tonight. What would the world have missed if you were not born? Think about that. If you were not born, what would the world have missed? Would the world have missed you if you were not born? I can say this confidently, and I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to boost anybody today. I believe if none of us here were born today, the world would miss heroes. You have no idea the impact you're making. You really don't. And that's one of the frustrations of a pastor. You see it, you have no idea. Heroes. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight, amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. We're in the presence of God. Christians are, are quietly praying tonight. We live in a world that is devoid of real heroes. We live in a world where people are looking up to people who are not worth looking up to. Looking up to celebrities and musicians, looking up to actors who lack character, who lack integrity, who lack substance. And no wonder our generation is getting weaker and weaker. No wonder the men are not men and women are not women anymore. Because of a lack of heroes. Nobody to model after. Nobody to follow and show them the way. And tonight, before I call the people of God, maybe you're here tonight and you're not saved. You haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. 
whether you believe it or not, every man and every woman needs a hero. Somebody we can look to. Somebody th that we can that can inspire us. Somebody who can shape our character direction of life. Somebody we can model our life after. But I thank God for the people God has put around my life. But the greatest hero, the true hero, is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, while I was still a sinner, while I was not thinking about God, while I was not living for God, while I was doing me, while I was chasing women and chasing money and chasing my own desires, Jesus had me in the forefront of his mind. Went to the cross. Paid a debt he did not owe. Because I owed a debt I could not pay. When I gave my life to Christ, everything changed. I now had a model I could follow. I, had, I now had somebody that would never let me down. I, I now had somebody who really was who he was, who said what he meant and meant what he said. There is no greater hero to model your life after, to desire to be like, than Jesus. Nobody. Tonight you're in this building, you're not right with God. There is sin in your life. You're not born again. Tonight. Would you give your life to Jesus? Tonight, will you let him not just become your hero, but your savior? Because if there's one thing humanity needs, it's a savior. We are lost and away from God. And Jesus came to save us from our sins and the judgment of God. Tonight, you can be saved. Tonight, you can leave here different. Tonight, you can leave here forgiven. Tonight, you can leave here a child of God. But you need to humble yourself and realize tonight that your sin has separated you from God. And ask him to forgive you. My Bible tells me he is ready. He cannot wait to save. Very quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're here tonight, you're not right with God. You haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. Say, Pastor, I'm not right with God. I need Jesus. I need to be saved. If that's you, will you do one thing? Just lift your hand up and put it down tonight. Amen. We want to pray with you. Very simple prayer tonight. Ask Christ to come into your life. And you can leave here a different person. I remember when I prayed this prayer almost 30 years ago. I felt like a weight was lifted from my life. And that was because it was. It's carrying a lot of sin. But Christ took it all away. And he wants to take yours away as well. Quickly, anyone in this building, maybe you're a backslider. You once had a relationship with God. You were once saved. You were once a child of God. But for whatever reason tonight, you're away from Jesus. You're doing your own thing. You're doing you. But the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end is a way of death. Tonight, Jesus is ready to save you, backslider. If you humble yourself, put away your pride and receive him again into your life. If that's you, would you do one thing? Just lift your hand up. I'm a backslider. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to come back home with God. Slip your hand up and put it down tonight. We'll see that. Amen. We'll pray with you. Final time I'm going to say this, unsaved. Backslider, you're in this building. The spirit of God is dealing with you. That's what that tugging is in your heart. You're not right with God. So will you pray with me? I want to get my heart right with Jesus Christ. If that's you, come and lift your hand up. I'll put it down. Don't be shy. God loves you in this place. Amen. Up and down. Praise God. Then I want to speak to the people of God tonight. I want to speak to the heroes of the house of God tonight. I want to speak to the good women. I want to speak to the married couples, the older saints, the church mothers, singles. Tonight, God has done such a wonderful work in all our lives. And he has not finished, not, not, not even near tonight. And I believe tonight, like Paul, what the Holy Spirit wants us to see is when we mix together, when we come together, when we do what we're supposed to do, that we are going to produce some Paul's. We're going to produce a powerful church. We're going to be able to reach the world. By ourselves, impossible. 
But when we come together for Christ, all things are possible. But we need to be very careful of division. It kills it dead. It removes the blessing and the favor of God. And we need to make the main thing the main thing tonight. And that's Jesus Christ and him crucified. When you and I made that the focus, nothing can stop us. Anything raises ugly head, we kill it dead in this place straight away. Because we don't allow it to fester, we don't allow it to grow. We want God to be glorified. We want Jesus to be lifted up. I tell you something that is attractive, it is beautiful. He says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I believe that tonight. God is doing some great things here. And I really believe the best is yet to come. Let's contend to be heroes. God's heroes. Let's all rise up to our feet. Amen. The altar's open. Let's come and find something to pray tonight. We want to spend some time in praise, seeing what the Lord has said.